All right, what we're going to have a look at here is how to create a very simple sort of sliding door. So we've got a going to have a couple of little trigger areas, so one at the back front, one at the back, and our door, which is represented by this green object. In the debug mode, I've turned on these uh, collision detection, so we can sort of just see the colliders. And so when we move into the box, the animation plays, and then when I go through to the second one, it finishes. One little issue with this is that because I've just set up the animations just to only play when you enter, it will just trigger. So we can sort of break the animations in a little bit, but this gives us a little foundation to work with for getting some animated doors working. So let's quit out of this and let's jump into Godot. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna set up a new folder and let's just call it sliding door. Now in this, I am just going to create a basic 3D scene. For a test environment. And let's just add some of the common features for this. So I'm just going to put a directional light into this. I'll just drag it up and I'm just going to pivot it down. And we'll add a floor. Uh, we're just going to add a static body. With a collision shape and a mesh instance. So let's just go and throw in new world boundary and just a plain mesh. And we'll just test the scene, just have a look. Okay, not seeing anything because I haven't put a camera on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a pre-made basically player object. So let's just drag one of these in. He's a little bit big. So let's go and either scale them down or in this case I am just going to do resize this static body with the mesh. Let's just transform that to be nice and big. So now I've got my environment. So this is basically our little test area. That's probably actually a little bit big, so let's just bring that down to say 20. So we've got our little test environment. Now what we're going to create is space for our door trigger. So I'm going to sort of group these together and we'll pull these out as a separate scene later on. So we're going to add another child node. I'm going to make this a node 3D. And let's call it um, door trigger. And we're going to add a couple of different things here. A couple of area 3Ds. And a static body. And so this first area 3D is a trigger area 1 or trigger area A, which will be on one side, and then trigger area B, and the static body is going to represent our door. I'm just going to go and add collision shapes to these. And each of these are just going to have a box shape. And what we'll do is let's go and modify. And the door will also have a mesh on it, which will also have a box shape. And let's go and put a just basic skeleton, skeleton material on this, or so just standard material. And we'll just make it in your color that we can sort of see. This door trigger is currently in the ground. I'm just going to turn on snapping just to make it a bit easier. And let's zoom in on that. So at the moment, all of our objects are over top of each other. So we need to sort of resize this. So let's make our 
mesh instances. So we're just going to take all of our collision shapes with a box shape. Let's make them, let's say, three high. Bit hard to see the ground, so I'm just going to turn off that ground for now so we can see those mesh instances. Now, so here, this first trigger area, what I'm going to do, let's actually scale all three of them up. So we're going to a transform, they just make them all twice as big as each other. So they're now nice and big in comparison to our player object. Now, trigger area one, we're going to just bring that forward. Trigger area B, let's move that behind. So we can sort of see, here's our door. Okay, that mesh instance is still quite small, so let's go and expand that one up. There we go. Probably a bit too big in relation to our door now, but we get the idea. So if we turn back on that, we can see our door here. And what we now need to do is have some code that when we move into here, it's going to cause this door to move. So let's actually animate the door to start with. So we've got our door. We're going to add an animation player. And we're going to add a couple of different scenes. So let's just do, add one that's idle. It's going to do nothing. That's going to be our autoplay option. We're going to add an open. Let's say it's going to take two seconds to open. We will now go back to our door. On a transform, we're going to lock in the position at the start, go to the end, and then lock in that position. If you wanted a door that basically would open and close, you could just add an extra part and have it finish back where it started. So that's our open animation. Let's also make a close. Make that go for two seconds as well. This time we're already at our finishing position. So let's position there and we'll get to our starting position. So we can now see we've got our animations. Open, close, and our idle animation. That does absolutely nothing. Excellent. Now we need to get this to actually run. So we're going to need to have some signals on the script. So let's just check our player. Is, node is already in the group player. If you haven't got that set up, go to groups, make sure you add it in. I'm going to add a script onto my door. Actually, sorry, not onto my door, onto my door trigger. So this is basically going to create us a template that we can reuse, reuse over and over. Now, what we now need to do, you don't have to worry about anything up here. We're going to, on our trigger area, under the node, when the body entered, connect it up, not to the door, but to the door trigger. And I'm going to do the same for trigger area B, body entered on the door trigger. So now I've got these two functions. I'm just going to check that these are actually working. So we're just going to check to see whatever body has entered. We'll just run that scene. Okay, my code has a bit of testing in there, so I'm just going to go through and find my player script. And we're just going to take out that global position and print. Just so now we can see player has entered that area and it does it for the back as well. So we can see that down in our debug session. Now we need to actually do something that we want. So let's just jump back to our door trigger script. So I can comment these out now. I know that they're working. So we're going to do if body dot is in group and whichever group I want it to be involved with. So in this case, it's the player group. Then do something. I'm going to get it. So the door trigger, I'm going to get the door and then the animation player. So we'll go door slash animation player dot play. So B, I might want to play the close. Let's take this whole set of code because we're just going to reuse it. And 
this one is going to run the open script. So let's test this now. Players moving, you can see that. And then let's go around, press the close and we can see it closing. Now to debug it, really useful to turn on the visible collision shapes. So now we can actually see those collision areas on our game. Really useful. So then last steps, if you want to, we could go, if we want to, got that template that we want to reuse, we can just save that whole branch as a scene. We might call it door template, because it's sort of something that can be reused over and over. And now if I wanted to, let's go and you know add some other meshes onto here, other objects to build a wall. So I'm just gonna add a child node, let's make a node 3D. Let's call that a wall. Actually, that shouldn't be that, so we'll just change its type. Let's make that a static body as well. Mesh instance, and let's add a collision shape. So on this, let's just give it default box. And let's give the mesh just a standard box mesh. And all we're going to do now is let's just take this in. Let's go and transform this one so it's three high. Three high, let's make it. Three wide and let's say 30 across. Let's do the same for the mesh. 30 across. Three deep. So we've got a nice big solid shape here. So we can take is our wall. Position it where we want. Let's maybe duplicate it. So we've got our wall. Let's test that. You can see our wall. Collisions aren't quite right. But we can see we can hit it. We can open the wall, it's going inside the other door. Okay, looks like I've got the wrong positions here, but we've got the idea. We've got a game and a wall that is basically working. Key thing is to play around and work with the door triggers to get them working exactly how you want. Okay, enjoy. Check out lunacitynow.com for more information. Take care and happy coming.